Once upon a time, there was a cute little girl in a small town. She was a nice and well-behaved girl. Her grandmother gave her a lovely red hood that she wore everywhere she went. Soon, people started calling her Little Red Riding Hood. One day, Little Red Riding Hood's mother had a task for her. Come here, my child. I want you to take this basket to your grandmother's house. She has been so sick lately that I bet a loaf of fresh baked bread and a bottle of wine would do her nicely. Has she, Mommy? Oh, I bet so, too. I would gladly take this basket to her. Now, my child, you already know the way to your grandmother's house. It's not too far from here. Please be careful. Do not steer away from the path. Don't take too long, and do not talk to strangers or be distracted by anything in your way. Okay, dear? said her mother in a worried tone. Yes, Mommy. Don't you worry. I will be fine, said Little Red Riding Hood as she went on her way to her grandmother's house. There she was, Little Red Riding Hood skipping her way down the path through the forest. Suddenly, a hunter crossed her path. The hunter recognized her and approached her. Well, hello there, Little Red Riding Hood. What are you doing so far from home? I'm going to my grandmother's house to take this basket to her. She has not been feeling so well, Mr. Hunter. Oh, that's terrible to hear, Little Red Riding Hood. You better get going. And by the way, I've heard there was a wolf around here. They are witty and deceitful. You better be careful, all right? Okay, Mr. Hunter, said Little Red Riding Hood, but she was too young and sweet to take the hunter's word seriously enough. She kept walking and walking, one step closer to her grandmother's house. However, further ahead there he was, a big, wicked-looking wolf. He saw Little Red Riding Hood approaching, so he viciously came near to her with a suspicious look. Oh, but what's this? Isn't this the cutest little girl? What are you doing all by yourself, so far from town? Oh, I'm sorry. I'm not supposed to talk to strangers, and I'm pretty sure I remember something about a wolf, too. You are so clever and yum... I mean awesome. Clever and awesome. But let's try and do with this. I am Mr. Wolf. And now that you know me, I'm no stranger to you. I guess you're right, Mr. Wolf. Pleased to meet you. I'm Little Red Riding Hood. I'm heading to my grandmother's house. She's sick, and I'm taking this basket with bread and wine to her so she can feel better. Aren't you the cutest? Well, I'll tell you what. There's a shortcut to your grandmother's house just over there. It's full of singing birds, beautiful petunias, and a fresh forest aroma. Why don't you take that way? Oh, thank you, Mr. Wolf. That's so nice of you. I'm sorry, I must go now. It's getting late. Bye-bye now, said Little Red as she skipped her way through the supposed shortcut. <laughs> what a naive and dumb little girl. I pointed her to the long way to her grandmother's house. Now I can get to her grandmother first, eat her, and surprise that little girl that she's going to be my dessert. <laughs> Grandmother, it's me, Little Red Riding Hood. I brought some bread and wine from Mummy. My favorite kid in this whole world wants by the door. With bread and wine, you say? Please come in, my child. The door's unlocked. I don't feel very well, and I can't get out of bed. Now all I have to do is wait for my second prey. <laughs> Was sure a long one. I think Mr. Wolf was confused and pointed me wrong way mistakenly. Grandmother, are you here? It's me, Little Red Riding Hood. I brought fresh baked bread and wine. Mommy said you haven't been feeling good, said Little Red Riding Hood, feeling something odd. <coughs> Come here, my child. I'm in bed, waiting for you. Grandmother, is it you? Of course it's me, my child. Come closer. But, Grandmother, your ears look so big and pointy. That's so I can hear you better, my child. But, Grandmother, your hands look so big and dark. Is that so I can hug you better, my child? But, Grandmother, your eyes look so 
so big and wide. Is that so I can see you better, my child? But Grandmother, your teeth are so big and sharp. That's so I can chew you better, my child. <laughs> and as soon as you know it, the wolf jumped out of bed and devoured Little Red Riding Hood with one bite as well. Ah, my plan was a success. <laughs> I'm so full. I think I'm just going to rest in this bed. Now, well, that's some big snoring coming from Grandma's house. That vicious wolf surely ate poor Grandma. I'm going to finish this once and for all. He entered the house and pointed his gun at the wolf, stopping at the very last second. He could hear a voice coming from the wolf's belly. Could it be? Of course it is. Must be the Grandma. She's still in there. He grabbed a pair of scissors and cut wide open the sleeping wolf's belly. He was happy and surprised to see both Grandmother and Little Red Riding Hood were there and okay. Oh, how horrible and dark was inside this wicked wolf's belly! Oh, yes indeed it was, my child, said the Grandmother, barely catching her breath. Let's teach this bad wolf a lesson. Let's grab some heavy stones from outside. I have an idea. Little Red Riding Hood went outside and took the heaviest stones she could find and took them inside of the house. The hunter loaded the wolf's belly with the stones and then the Grandmother sewed up the belly. When the wolf woke up, he felt heavy and sick. Oh, my stomach. I must have eaten too much. That day, Little Red Riding Hood learned an important lesson. To never walk off the path and to never talk to strangers. Especially wicked-looking vicious wolves. <laughs>